Hi there, I am Bonnie McCaffrey and thank you so much for coming back for another video this month. I'm here in Birmingham, England with Yvonne Brown who does some really incredible texture and fiber artwork that um, is really neat to look at. Hi Yvonne, thank Hi, you. Bonnie. Let me show you, um, let me just ask you about some of the pieces in your okay. booth here. Now the one, the green piece up top, lots of texture going on in there. What, what is, um, what, what have you done what there? material? Mm. I work on a lot of uh, very unusual art materials. Now this piece here is um, cotton wool paper. It's like a cheap silk paper really. Oh. Uh, made from surgical cotton wool and dyes and wallpaper paste. Very oh. easy and quick to do. Um, gives you this beautiful, beautiful texture that you can use in lots of different ways. Brilliant to stitch into. Um, it, unfortunately, it doesn't melt, but you can burn it. So oh, very yeah. carefully with a candle well, if and you, a wet sponge. A, a candle and a wet sponge, I see. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like paper, but it also feels like fabric as well. Yes, it's very soft and it's great for stitching into and it's very strong. Yeah, it does, strong. It does feel so really strong. So you can stitch into it by hand or machine and it won't tear. Yeah. So it's very, very versatile. Um, I used it a lot for my embroideries, which we have up here. Um, but another fabric that I make um, is a cross mm. between a fabric and a paper. It has um, muslin on the back. I think you call it uh, cheesecloth. Very, very fine, um, open weave fabric. Yeah. Tissue paper on the front, PVA glue and dyes. Tissue paper? Just tissue paper. Buy lots of shoes. You'd be okay. Oh, okay. So I guess your shoes come with tissue paper oh, in them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's a neat so fabric. So really to work nice, with. strong fabric. Well, I use that for backgrounds for embroideries, but also for making these um, book covers. I They're love They're very these strong. Are so. The PVA gives it a really nice surface. Yeah. Again, it's great for stitching into. Um, you can do any technique you like. So yeah. it's um, enormous fun. And so this you is can make these beautiful um, little books and cover anything you like, a photograph album, a notebook, yeah. a sketchbook. Oh, those are great. Okay. Now you have some other pieces and I really love the texture of these. So tell me about the blue-green piece over there. Tell me about that piece. Uh, that's a collage. Um, it's very much um, based on sculpture. If you want to make like a sculptured background or lovely surface, um, you build up a collage of found fabrics, um, bits of paper, uh, lace, net, uh, scrim, uh, they, they don't have to be coloured to begin with. Machine it all down into your chosen design and then I paint it over with gesso and Beautiful. then colour it whichever colour I like to do afterwards. Yeah. Now you have a brand new book out and I just love this book. Um, and I see some of the pieces on the wall have the similar flavor right. to this. I've been inspired by medieval tiles and sculpture. Um, it's a real big love of mine. Um, so here in this book, um, it's showing you the sources that I've worked from and how I've interpreted them. Um, I've been very lucky in finding things that melt and burn, which is my big passion. Yeah, yeah. So um, up so here we have um, tiles. Um, uh, making in, into big tile panels and also if you think about other subjects um, here I have a strata piece with embedded um, uh, fossils oh, so you, you, I you, love you, that idea you can uh, adapt the idea to, right. to lots and lots not of necessarily squares no. but other shapes yeah. Yeah. and the piece behind us is the piece behind here is another big tiled piece um, it's all very very sort of medieval um, quite sort of um, patchworky if you like yeah. but it's taking on board all those lovely um, medieval designs right and this piece is just stunning this piece here is based on um, sculpture from Ely Cathedral which is a beautiful medieval cathedral not far from where I live um, the outside of the um, piece is as the sculpture would be when it was pristine and new. So that's um, actually machine trapunto. Yeah. But the centre is a, a collage showing how the sculpture's been worn and weathered. Yeah. So it's basically oh, it's made up with the creatures, um, which is my tile technique with the felt, um, and then a big collage. So I've taken the initial um, inspiration and the initial technique and developed it, which is all demonstrated in my book. You'll be able to follow it through from, yeah, from the yeah. simple tile um, technique through to the sculpture. But you're going to give us a sneak peek. A, a sneak peek. Okay. So this is an example yeah. of... Here's a nice little tiled piece. It's quite quick and easy to make. The first thing you have to do is to make your tiles. So to make the tiles, I have my little samples here. You need a piece of um, violin or stitch and tear to start with. And on here, you're going to trace your design. So design goes on there. Next thing you... And violin is? 
Pelon. Is it? Is it Pelon. Pelon. Like it's a lightweight interfacing? Yes, lightweight interfacing, yeah. Okay. Not the iron on one, just a Not, very no. lightweight stitch one. Okay. Just because we don't have Eileen. Well, that I, we might, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, stitch and tear will be fine. Stitch and tear. Yeah, okay. That's fine. So. Then you need a piece of 100% cotton. Uh, this is your base fabric, your background fabric. Um, it, don't choose um, anything with a definite print. These, right. These okay. are lovely Stonehenge type things or um, batiks are really good. Yeah. And then yeah. on the top of that, I'm going to lay. What is this? A piece of Kunin felt. Now, Kunin felt is very synthetic felt. It's made from recycled plastic bottles, so that's, you're saving the world. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and it melts brilliantly with a soldering iron and a heat gun. So that's going to go on the front. So you have your little sandwich set up like this. Pin it in all four corners because you're going to work from the back. You don't want everything curling over when you turn it over. Right, okay. okay. So, so you have there's, your there's your design. There's your fabric, there's your felt. Okay. okay. You take it to the sewing machine and you machine it from the back. So here's a piece that I've actually machined through. Um, I've got a nice silky um, embroidery thread that's going to be um, work really well with the felt. You don't want anything too bright. You just want it to be quite muted and, right. and work with the felt surface. Do you have to worry about that melting, the thread? Um, well, silky rayons don't melt. It's, okay. Um, it's Is that made... another reason you yeah. choose that? Pack? Yeah. Or you could the use thread. a metallic thread. They don't usually melt okay. either. Okay. Good. Okay. So I've machined the design through. So I've just followed the line round. And then there's my design showing on the front. So the next step is then to cut that out. So I'm going to cut it out using my soldering iron. Ah. So it's this really, really lovely little tool here. Well, the soldering iron has Keep a very fine tip. Um, it's an 18 uh, watt, so it's not too high, um, you know, the heat. Um, and it concentrates the heat on that tip. So if I just cut round here as close to the stitching as possible. Wow. It melts it away really quickly. And there you are, I can pull it away. So gradually pull away the felt oh my gosh. that you don't need. Okay, see I'm inspired. See how quickly that works. It's great fun. Much better than scissors. So then I love this. This is um to keep everything safe. Yes, I see that. It's putting that point right yeah. down in there so the, you don't get burned. No, the soldering much. iron needs to be kept in a safe position when you're not working yeah. with it. So keep it safe. A nice terracotta pot, not a plastic Perfect. one. Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> and you'll okay. notice also I'm working on a heat proof surface. So here okay, just I've got a piece of glass. You can use all sorts of things, a tile or whatever. Now then, once I've um, cut out my tile, my next job is then to distress the surface. I'm going to use ah. this here, which is a heat gun. Right. Um, a hairdryer won't work. It's not strong enough. Oh, it has enough. to be hotter. Okay. So you need a real, real good, strong heat gun. I'm going to run this heat gun for a few minutes just to get it really hot. And then I'm going to lower it down to the work and let it melt the surface. Now, you really must watch what's happening because suddenly it'll start to melt and you'll have enormous holes everywhere. So here we go. Okay. Wow, and look at what it has done to that. Now okay. keep it to this camera. You here. can see how quickly no. it melts the felt and it sort of distresses it. It breaks down the colour and wow. gives it this really sort of aged um, feel to it. It does curl the fabric up a little bit. Once you finish, you turn it over and you give it a, a steam press on the back okay. and it'll flatten it. It'll flatten right out. Okay. Because the cotton fabric d isn't affected by the no, heat. No, not it's at just all. The felt. It's just the felt that will melt. The cotton won't melt. Wow. Okay. So once you've got four tiles done, then you can join them all together. So I've got one here where I've joined my four tiles together. You can see that they've been melted ah. and distressed, so it's broken down the colour. Yeah. I've laid my tiled piece onto another piece of fabric, and I've machined right round the edge. I've gone round twice on that line. Oh, so it's nice and secure. Nice and secure. Just a straight stitch. Yeah, just a straight stitch, but free machining. So you can see I've got this wobbly line. Yeah. And my next step then is to cut away the top fabric to the line and you can see I've made a small hole in the middle because this is where my medieval tiles have worn and cracked and broken oh, where okay. the joins right, are you see. Right. So Do you use scissors? Uh, yeah, part? I use sharp scissors right up to, close to the edge right. for this. Okay? okay. So then if we go back to the original piece and you can see here 
how I've cut right round the edge. So now I've got this broken tile effect. Yeah. You don't need to do any more stitching on that edge. It's supposed to be a little bit rough. Right. Um, because we're looking at a medieval tile that's many, many years old. You're right. Okay. It's perfect. This I call my grouting fabric. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now I can square that up and then put a border on. And your borders can be any sort of patchwork at all. If you go and look at these medieval floors, you've got a patchwork quilt beneath your, beneath your feet. You don't have to think about your designs. Now this piece, I mean, th these are wonderful, but this has even more dimension. So what is the difference between that and these? Um, well, when I started off doing that, um, I started off using the felt. So any creatures or you know, particular designs is still the tile technique. But then I built up a big collage, all yeah. sorts of found fabrics. You can use net. Um, string, scrim, even tissue paper yeah. and just stitch it all down. doesn't have to be any particular colour. Yeah. Um, quite neutral is probably best. And then afterwards I've painted it over with gesso and then with acrylic paints. Now the whole technique is in the book so yeah. if you'd like to have a go you can follow it through yeah. and see how it works. Yeah, It's absolutely wonderful. Now let me throw you a little question that I throw everybody if I can remember. Oh help. And, and that question is, what is your philosophy of life? My philosophy of life? Um, I don't know. Um, go, just go for it. Have fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> don't miss any opportunities. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this, Yvonne. That's a pleasure. Lovely to talk to you. And thank you all for coming. I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.